So Rwanda, when that announcement was made, I told you there'd be a problem. I predicted that the European Court of Human Rights would get involved. Of course, no one listened, they never do. And we were given assurances by Priti Patel and Boris Johnson that all would be well, this policy would happen. They've even launched a Facebook campaign saying to people, don't come to Britain or you might end up in Rwanda. Well, here we are in Brexit Britain. We voted not to have European courts making decisions over our lives. And yet on that runway yesterday at Boscombe Down, the last few people who were due to go to Rwanda, the previous lot, all having been taken off because of the Human Rights Act. And we had an intervention from the Strasbourg Court, which means that no one left for Rwanda yesterday. Or oh, by the way, 444 came in through Dover yesterday. As I speak this morning, there are loads more crossing the channel. Uh, there are gonna be, over the course of the next few months, tens of thousands of young men that come across the English Channel. According to the Today programme this morning, they're all desperate people. Well, some may be, the vast majority are coming here for purely economic reasons, and many, of course, will finish up in this country in a form of modern day slavery and a form of criminality. So what happens now? Well, as ever, Boris will bluster. Well, we'll have to look at possibly changing legislation. And in two weeks time, Dominic Raab, you know the one, the guy that looks like a rabbit in the headlights. God knows how people like this are running up our country. He will introduce a British Bill of Rights and will be told it will amend the ECHR. It will amend the Human Rights Act. It will make no difference. And our newspapers, the front pages will go on and on and on condemning lefty judges. But it's just like the same argument about EU membership. For years and years and years, Politicians and press moaned about decisions taken by the European Union. It was UKIP that said, let's end this, let's leave. We left. We thought in doing so, there'd be no more foreign courts. We thought in doing so, we'd get back control of our borders. And now we find, because Boris didn't do Brexit properly, because we stayed part of the ECHR, oh, and they'll tell you, it's different to the EU. Well, believe you me, in Strasbourg, you can walk from the European Parliament through the corridors straight into the European Court. They are completely interconnected. I don't think this government have got the guts to grasp this nettle. They fear being condemned, but they're being condemned anyway by the Archbishop of Canterbury, Prince Charles, the media, most people in Parliament, including many on the Conservative side. This, folks, is Brexit 2.0. This is about, are we really going to get back control of our country and our borders? We should not be continuing to be bound by a 1951 convention from the UN. We should not have that European Court of Human Rights in Strasbourg overriding a Supreme Court decision yesterday. If we want our sovereignty, we must leave the ECHR. We must get rid of the Human Rights Act. You know, we don't need lessons from people in Strasbourg about justice and liberty. I think over the centuries, we've done it rather better, I think in many ways than they've done. And here's the other odd thing. Many of those who made those decisions in Strasbourg, they're not even trained lawyers. They're not even judges. They're jurists, which is a sort of weird EU, European thing for people who are basically political activists. So how do we make this happen? You've got to tell your MP, you've got to tell your MP that if they're going to keep their promise, their promise to control our borders, they must tell Johnson we need to leave the ECHR. You can apply huge pressure on this issue. And I tell you what, as the next weeks go by, as tens of thousands cross the channel, this is going to become an even bigger issue than the cost of living in terms of political priorities. And if we don't, and if we go on accepting, vast numbers of undocumented young males. What does it mean? Well, in the past, I've said here to you on YouTube that it gives us a real genuine terrorist threat. I've reminded you that five out of the eight of those men that committed those atrocities in Paris a few years ago had come into France with our small dinghies across the Mediterranean. But there's something else going on inside British society, in our cities, which is worrying. The hardline Marxists are using this issue to say that the British government and the police are barbaric. Have a look at these pictures. This was Peckham 
last week. The police came to arrest somebody who'd overstayed their visa and were in the country illegally. And yet the mob, egged on by left-wing activists, 200 of them, went in the street in Peckham to stop the police from doing their job. This issue is leading to a complete breakdown in the rule of law, in law and order. The implications of this are terrifying for the future cohesion of our society. And that's why I don't want you just to agree with this video. I don't want you just to be angry that that flight to Rwanda didn't take off as hundreds more pour across the English Channel. We've got to apply pressure to our politicians. We've got to tell them this is Brexit all over again. If they don't do what we want, they won't get our vote next time round.